At least seven years ago, I met a theoretical physicist and mathematician, Professor George Curie. One application of a theory he developed was using electricity as an alternative treatment for healing. Can you describe this application? Allow me to first briefly explain the theory. It's based on the hypothesis that our bodies are conductors of electrical energy, which can be manipulated with electromagnetic fields. It also affirms that we really are walking transistors, humans, animals, and plants. In fact, all living things are electrical entities, and life itself is an electrical phenomenon. Tesla was a visionary genius who was considered by many to be the greatest inventor known. One of his less publicized gems was the use of electro electrotherapy as a medical treatment. In fact, he reported it to the 8th Annual Meeting of the American Electrotherapeutic Association in September of 1898. Shortly after, I was handed this book by Barry Lyons. I read about Royal Rife, who in 1920 started his research for a cancer cure. By 1932, he was able to determine the precise electrical frequency which destroys individual microorganisms responsible for cancer, herpes, tuberculosis, and he was curing both animals and humans. He was written up in Science Magazine and Smithsonian Institution's annual report. His book in 1935 called The Secret of Life, written by a Russian immigrant living in Paris named George Lakovsky. He compiled his observations about the effects of electricity and radio waves on living organisms. With Nikola Tesla's help, he built an electrical device known as a multiple wave oscillator to treat various disease. There was also Antoine Priore, who in 1928 said, Le cancer dérangement électrique, which in English means cancer is an electrical disorder. There was Wilhelm Reich, the German biophysicist and associate of Sigmund Freud, who in the 30s discovered bions and wrote the book, The Cancer Biopathy. In Canada, there was Gaston Naissant, who did a similar work as Reif. In fact, the Greeks spoke of lodestone, a strongly magnetized rock, and its properties 800 years before Christ. It's also mentioned in the works of Aristotle, Plato, and Homer. Uh, in the late 1400s, Paracelsus was considered the greatest doctor of the Middle Ages, and he claimed that magnetism was superior to anything he had in his medicine chest. 100 years later, Dr. William Gilbert, president of the College of Physicians and personal physician to Queen Elizabeth I, wrote a treatise entitled The Magnet, which was a scientific study on the effects of electricity and magnetism on healing. Another notable scientist achieved tremendous success using magnetism to cure a variety of diseases up to the 19th century. There was Frank Mesmer, Alessandra Volta, and Michael Faraday. I could go on and on, but we will run out of tape. <laughs> well, bring us up to more recent times. Well, I have a copy here of a panel discussion which included Dr. Robert Becker, author of Cross Currents and mm -hmm. the Body Electric. This is from the New York Academy of Sciences held in 1974. I will read only a short paragraph. Finally, I would like to emphasize that I think we are standing on the threshold of a relatively new era in medicine. To go out on a limb, I would say that in 20 years, almost as much electrotherapy as chemotherapy will be used in the medical community. I think that we will be able to manipulate regeneration, healing, pain control, perhaps malignancy, and a whole variety of problems. Members of the Department of Biological Science of Northwestern University are convinced that there remains no reasonable doubt that living systems are extraordinarily sensitive to magnetic fields. George Chatham of NASA stated, and I quote, careful and precise studies of magnetism and its effects may open new approaches to biology, since the entire body is basically an electrical organism. We have accumulated similar findings over the last 25 years from former Russia, Japan, France, Germany, Canada, and many other parts of the world. Who is Dr. Nordenstrom? Dr. Bjorn Nordenstrom of Sweden, who developed a theory that describes our bodies as electrical entities. In October 1992, I was invited to attend the first international conference on electrochemotherapy of cancer, which was held in Beijing. Dr. Nordenstrom was honored by a very grateful Chinese people in front of several hundred participants. 
They published this report. His treatment has now been performed on over 4,000 patients, mostly terminal, in over 400 hospitals. How is EPIC related to Dr. Nordstrom? The EPIC incorporates many of Professor Nordstrom's ideas, except that our focus is on pain control management and our application is non-invasive. How does it do that? Well, let's demonstrate how treatment is delivered. As you can see, no surgery is necessary. We can apply these fields by remote action. As you see, with the EPIC, removal of clothing is optional. However, any conductive metal objects, such as keys or jewelry, etc., must be removed prior to treatment, since they may divert the energy away from the intended area. Each treatment lasts approximately five minutes with a maximum of six per day. The entire session takes less than one hour and may be administered every other day. When the treatment is over, we simply advise you to relax and continue your normal routine. Can EPIC be used on everyone? Well, because the device emits strong currents, we cannot use it on persons with pacemakers, as it may cause signal interference. Those with permanent metal implants in their bodies are also excluded. Well, we don't know for certain, but we suspect that the EPIC may prove to be acupuncture without the needles. This device been approved by the FDA? I would like to make it perfectly clear that the EPIC ion dispersing device has not been sanctioned nor approved by the FDA, the AMA, nor any other recognized medical body. Although it is being used in Europe, any results obtained abroad would be only, only be considered anecdotal according to FDA standards. And since we're still in a research stage, no medical claims whatsoever can be made or implied. We also insist that practitioners keep proper records and make them available to all those involved in the research program. The EPIC IDD should therefore be used solely for the purpose of continuing scientific research and experimentation. We have so much more to learn, and by doing this, we will eventually find the answer. What about reports that I have read that electricity is harmful to us? Is this true? Of course, the utility companies will not admit to this, <laughs> but there is increasing evidence that living in close proximity to high-tension wires etc. may have a, a detrimental effect on one's health. This has created confusion. We believe that exposing the body to strong EMFs or electromagnetic fields as they're called for very short periods of time can affect the polarity of a cell, it can neutralize excess charges, it can stimulate the sodium potassium pump to begin functioning again and of course relieve pain. On the other hand, we also believe that constant exposure to these same fields may actually be harmful.